Hey guys, how you doing? This is uh, Mike McCormick here at Advanced Criminology here in Owings Mills, Maryland. It's been a few months since I've been on uh, the channel, uh, and I apologize for that. However, I want to pick it up because recently uh, the video I put out uh, around February 16, 2018, that had to do with the Corrine Gaines shooting uh, during a hostage situation. Uh, bar excuse me, more or less a barricade situation where she uh, refused to come out of the apartment uh, upon orders by the uh, police department who had served the initial arrest warrant for a traffic violation. Subsequently, the tactical unit, she refused to come out at that point as well. Uh, I will tell you, you guys have been very responsive to this video. This video has had well over 20,000 uh, hits to it and views to it. And so uh, we appreciate that. That tells me that this has been a very controversial case to a lot of folks uh, around the country, if not the world, who, who also focus in on uh, what's going on in the United States. Um, I wanted to talk about this particular video and expand on some of the information since that time in February. Um, I'm local, I think you guys know that, and so I get a lot of information. Um, sometimes a lot of folks from out of town won't have all the information that I have. Um, and so you'll get bits and pieces and put the stories together and that's fine uh, but it's my job to kind of like go behind the scenes you know sometimes after these these tragic incidents or incidences that just don't have a, a clear explanation as to why they occur and then I try to explain you know what I believe based upon the facts and circumstances that have come come to light since this shooting uh, and explain to you exactly what uh, transpired so here we go uh, today is August the 16th, excuse me, August the 19th, 2018. So let's pick it up. There's been a lot of, I want to say, myths. Uh, I, I, when I look at some of the comments that came out in reference to this particular case, um, don't get me wrong, this is what I consider to be one of the best forums that's out there is this particular uh, channel when it comes to listening to the folks' different opinions. Uh, and I respect all opinions. I may not agree with everything you say. Certainly you may not agree with everything I say. But at some point, it's good for the exchange dialogue. I try to tune out some of the negative stuff and some of the racist stuff that I see because it's really not warranted. I mean, we're, we're not here talking about race. I, I will tell you that right now. So if you think this case has something to do with race, I, I, would, I would not interject race where race does not be interjected. And I'm going to say this, even though I feel like some of the things that happen uh, and, and, and I won't say feel, but let's, let's just say that I understand why certain people would feel a certain way about racism in this particular case based upon the history of what's been going on with uh, police departments around, around the country. Um, I will also say this, that when you put race into a situation, right, um, you also have to factor in that that may not be the case often. Um, and I'm here to tell you that um, sometimes when decisions are made, uh, whether it's a jury or not, they're not necessarily making that decision upon race in many cases. It's just they've been asked to look at the facts and circumstances as they've been uh, interjected through the attorneys in cases or uh, what the judge has uh, outlined that the case may be or the state, the case that they bring. I sit in a lot of courtrooms and have sat in many courtrooms <laughs> since the uh, 80s when I first began on the uh, police department in Baltimore City. Uh, I want to also comment that um, there was a statement made by a, a viewer. Um, I didn't take it personal, but I will tell you this, is that I worked in one of the toughest areas of the city for 10 years in the police department. Those of you who are not from this area, I ask you to Google. Uh, the Murphy Homes, Lexington Terrace Homes back in the 1980s and the crack epidemic that occurred. And if you Google that information, you'll come up and you'll see how the city looked at that time, the high rises that were involved, and I worked specialized units and I worked undercover and buying narcotics as well. Uh, so no, I just didn't sit behind a desk. I'm very fortunate in many ways because I spent time in the military, uh, spent time in the police department, and I decided to go to college to get a lot of the theory, as they say about certain issues when it comes to criminal justice. So I'm not apologizing because I did all of that. I did all that so I can see today and give you a better perspective as to what 
uh, goes on in the criminal justice system. See, we just don't focus on policing. We focus on everything. We focus on the court system. Uh, we focus on probation and parole. Uh, we, and we focus on uh, correctional uh, issues as well. So it's just not policing. Policing just at this point in time in our history takes a forefront to everything, to a lot of issues that are going on around the country. So we're going to talk about them. The news is going to certainly talk about them. And you are going to want to talk about it and discuss it too. So uh, I just wanted to talk, talk about that and, and what my background was and what I actually did on the street. Um, so one, one issue was that I, I, I mentioned in my first video that I had fired my weapon only once, which was true. The only difference is, is that what I didn't say is that probably in that 10-year period, I probably had over 1,000 arrests, probably wrote somewhere in the neighborhood about 50 or 60 search and seizure warrants for narcotics. And in one of those particular cases, we were able to uncover a stolen officer's weapon in East Baltimore based upon one of the warrants I had wrote in West Baltimore. So, um, no, I, I didn't sit behind a desk. And I was out in the field. I was a field training officer. Field training officer in any police department is an officer who's assigned uh, a particular academy uh, trainee. Uh, and that's probably like the last uh, thing that a trainee has to do is go out in the field and field train with ex experienced officer. And so I did that for about three years. And uh, I was asked to evaluate officers, and, and, and I think out of all the officers I evaluated, there was only one that I had questions about whether or not they could actually can transition from the academic academy training to actually how things run on the street. So other than that, that's pretty much it. Okay, let's get off of me, and let's get into this particular case here. Okay, as you all know, the, the jury awarded $37 million in damages uh, to Corin Gaines, a 23-year-old Randallstown uh, girl who was shot and killed by, by police officers after a six-hour standoff. There was a jury of six women in, and there was a shot fired by Corporal uh, Ruby, Ru Royce Ruby. Uh, uh, he killed her, and at the same time, he, the bullet uh, struck ricocheted off the refrigerator and hit her son, Cody. Uh, and the jury basically said that the shot was not reasonable and therefore violated their, uh, her civil rights under the state and federal statutes. Now, you can't, you, when you follow stuff in legal, legal leads, right, you, you can't blame the her at this point um, if, in fact, that a jury said that it was not reasonable and therefore violated the civil rights under state and federal statutes. If we're going to have some semblance of law in this country, we certainly have to go by what the juries found, even though we may not like their decision. So, it breaks down like this. The jury awarded more than $32 million to Cody in damages, that's the son, and $4.5 million to his sister. A lot of you didn't even know that she had a second child, and uh, the name was Carson, that was awarded $4.5 million. Gaines' father and mother were awarded $300,000 and $307,000, respectively. And the Gaines estate itself was awarded $300,000. Uh, now, Maryland, the state of Maryland is a cap. A lot of states have caps on a liability in certain cases. Um, however, there were a lot of speculation by some of the legal people who said that they didn't think uh, um, that they may not see a full amount uh, of the award. And in fact, you need to know, too, that there was no punitive damage is awarded either. So uh, I just wanted to bring, bring that particular thing up. Um, now, if you didn't know, let's see, let's go back here, because I'm reading some of this stuff from notes that I've taken. Uh, okay, let's go back here. Um, okay, as you guys know, the case garnered national attention. Uh, the Baltimore County State Attorney's Office said they were appealing it, and that's still under appeal, if you didn't know, from Feb it's been since February. So the case is still under, under appeal. Um, moving forward here, it says here that um, the Gaines family turns expressed relief that the jury agreed with them and found the shooting was wrong. Some said they were frustrated that that actually uh, Ruby, the de detective, is still on the force, uh, um, and that he was also promoted um, from uh, uh, where he was to a corporal, I believe. Um, the testimony, and, and, and I want this, is, this is important because it says here, the testimony and legal arguments in the trial centered on the events that led to Ruby's shots that day. 
Now, mind you, you need to know this. Let me let me set this up for you. Basically, uh, uh, Miss Gaines is warned on a traffic warrant. Typically, in Baltimore County as well as Baltimore City, um, when the bench warrant is issued, um, they are, they send out teams of officers to make those arrests. Now, although the bench warrant may be for traffic and it's kind of insignificant case, if you will, it's still a warrant, no matter what, no matter how you describe it, the adjective you put in front of it, bench or otherwise, it's still a warrant for an arrest. Uh, all you got to do in, in this particular state is, is not show up for, for traffic court, and I will tell you a bench warrant is issued for you immediately for your arrest. Okay, it's a contempt of court charge is what it is. So, uh, minor as it may be, it's still a, a, a warrant that police officers can come to your door four or five in the morning, uh, knock on the door and enter the, enter the premises to make the arrest. Okay, so I just wanted to explain that to you because some of you have asked the questions whether or not that, um, who, you know, who serves who serves those types of warrants? Well, yeah, um, we have an apprehension unit in this state, state and city <laughs> that every day, 24 hours a day, serve these types of warrants. Okay, moving on. Um, so, the two officers approached the, the, the apartment. Um, the boyfriend uh, and, and his son actually leave the apartment, leaving Miss Gaines and her son in there. Excuse me, the boyfriend and the, and the daughter. They leave. The Miss Cor Miss Gaines and her son stay. Now, officer testified, the first two officers actually that got there, that, that knocked on the door, that when they first got there and they opened the door up, uh, they saw her holding a, a weapon and pointed, pointed at them. They immediately shouted gun and back out. Now, I want you to keep this in mind. Um, just a state of mind of, of let's say, Miss Gaines. That if she, if she really wanted to fire this weapon, she probably would have fired it, it seemed to me, that if you have this many feelings about police, policing in, 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 in the this, in this state, and you feel that way strongly about your position, uh, about us being a citizen in the United States, that the time to act, the time to show that you don't agree with policing was to fire on those officers when they first came in your home. She didn't do that. They backed off. And at that point, they called for the tactical units to come and assist. And this is what leads Officer Ruby to the scene because he's part of that tactical unit. Okay? And I'm sure the officers basically gave, gave a description of what they saw when they first got there, a description of the weapon, you know, description of her, and what, was, what they could vaguely remember seeing. All right. So now we have a six-hour standoff, pretty much, where everybody's trying to talk her down. Uh, mom, father, other relatives. I think they had a psychologist on, on site, and they're trying to trying to talk her down. Now, let's get to the critical point here, because the speculation is, and, and, and I'm going to correct myself. In the last video, I said that two rounds were fired. However, we now know that four rounds were fired, and they all came from Officer Ruby's weapon. Ms. Gaines never, ever fired her weapon. She never fired her weapon. Other than brandishing that weapon in the two officers' face initially, that was, that was about the closest that any of those officers would have come to losing their life. When you look at the scenario of how the apartment was laid out, and the Officer Ruby at the doorway, in the hallway of this apartment building, um, he takes an ill-advised shot, which was, it indicated to that in, in, in the trial, um, that it was an ill-advised shot. Uh, it, it was also indicated that this was a shot that was not taught or trained by the uh, SWAT team uh, uh, education academy. So we all know and can all agree at this point that it was an ill-advised shot, particularly with a child in tow. Um, and basically he shot through a kitchen wall and he testified that he did not specifically know her whereabouts in that kitchen. He probably just timed it as she went in that particular in, 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 in doorway of the kitchen area and fired that weapon. Okay. Now, where it gets tricky and where it gets kind of where we now know why the jury kind of uh, leaned the way that they did was that once the shot was fired, there wasn't an immediate entry to the apartment. They, they waited a few seconds and then came into the apartment and... Uh, Officer Ruby alone. Remember now, this is a tactical team with several members to it that entered that apartment. No one ever else fired a shot other than Officer Ruby. <laughs> so now he's got to account not only for killing her with the first round, he's got to account for three more rounds that he pumped into her according to 
court documents, according to testimony, according to forensics. Because somebody asked me online about how do I know so much? Well, the forensics is out there. Uh, the case is out there. Uh, so, you know, at this point, you can go back and do a little research yourself and you'll see that, in fact, four rounds were fired. There was also reports that she fired her shotgun. In fact, she never fired a shotgun. And again, this was all out there on the media. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the, the local news media. They didn't, they didn't, they never, they never said that. This is some of the social media nonsense that was out there that she had fired her weapon. In fact, it never happened. So I wanted to, to clear that up, some of the myths that, that were out there. Okay, so as we move forward here, this is what the officer testified to. And he says that Gaines had immediately entered the uh, kitchen first. And, uh, excuse me, Cody, her son, went into the kitchen. Okay, and then her, his mother followed him. And as Ruby watched his, his testimony, he said he saw her braids and the barrel of her shotgun raised. It was then that he fired from the building's hallway, again, out in the hallway of an apartment complex, right? You fired through drywall to wood, and he says where he thought, quote unquote, says where he thought uh, Gaines was. Then he entered the apartment and shot Gaines in black and white. I'm reading it to you three more times. Okay. He testified there was no choice that officers were going to die if he didn't take the shot. Well, he already took the first shot. The first shot was a fatal shot. Okay. Uh, and that's testified through through forensics that that bullet fired, went through her lungs. Fired, you know, went through her lungs out of arm. It hit, 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 the, hit, hit the child. The two of the bullets, it, and excuse me, I, I'm, I'm, let, me, let me go back and clarify this, because now this is coming from forensic stuff here. It says here that two of the bullets, not just one, but two of the bullets also struck Cody, hitting him in his cheek and arm. Okay. Uh, so, you know, this is what's out there in terms of what has already been reported, what has also been clarified um, by reputable media, media, local media. The Sun, Baltimore Sun is probably one of the most reputable um, when it comes to the beat reporting and police reporting in this state, in this state, trust me, the Boma Sun uh, is on point. They have some 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 cub reporters uh, and and local news media. Um, a lot of you are familiar with Jane Miller from WBAL Radio. If a lot of you nationally don't know her, I would Google her her resume, and you will find out she's probably she's been a, she's received so many national awards for 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 crime reporting. It's unbelievable, and investigative reporting as well. That if you really read her resume, she will you'll see that she is par none one of the best uh, uh, news reporters in in, 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 the, in the Mid Atlantic region here in in, in this in this state. Sorry about that. I had to uh, take my phone here and just put it on vibrate for a sec. Okay, so I wanted to bring uh, that to your attention as again we have received so many, and we certainly let me tell you something. I appreciate every comment that I get, whether some of it's negative, some of it's positive, some of it's racist, as I said before. But, you know, we're beyond that. We want to look at the facts, the cases. Um, all of us bring certain amount of prejudice to the table. We bring certain amounts of biases to the table based upon our upbringing, based upon our surroundings, uh, based upon our lack of knowledge in many cases. Uh, and that's the reason why you had this forum, so we can kind of exchange, you know, those things where we lack, so to speak, and, and come away with a different perspective. Um, so I will tell you that since this shooting, Baltimore County has, has, has started to retrain the SWAT team. Okay. So it isn't something that just happened. This is something as a, as a result, because when, when the county says, well, we're going to retrain, that means they're actually looking at the policies and practices that maybe we need to tweak them more than what they were. Uh, we have to come up with better, better, better ways and methods to, uh, do our job in a fashion where the loss of life can be at least minimal, if not any. And so that's where they're at. Uh, I'm at the 20 minute mark in this video. I don't like to keep my videos too long because I don't want to bore you. At the same time, I want you to respond. And um, that's it. My name is uh, Mike McCormick. I'm the president of uh, the Advanced Criminology uh, Services here in Owings Mills, Maryland. Um, I appreciate your, uh, your responses. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. You know, you might hear that from a lot of videos where people say, you know what, why don't you subscribe to the channel? Well, we want you to subscribe. And that way, you know, you can keep up with what's going on here. I certainly tend to do more videos as time goes on. I've been derelict, if you will, 
in my in my ability to get back on the air and give you the kind of content that's coming out of, out of this locale here in Maryland and Baltimore City where as you know nationally you know we've hit the, the, the mark where we've been rated the uh, number one city f uh, per capita for, for, for crime in this, in, in, unfortunately on uh, this day and age so there's a lot of things going on that need to be rectified uh, and I'm sure those things will take place in the meantime in between time um, I thank you for your time and attention to this video.